Technology continues to be a primary catalyst for change in the world. Werner Vogels has been Amazon's CTO since 2005 and observed many game-changing technological advancements over this time, giving him a unique ability to distinguish substantive progress from mere fads. There's a lot of buzz and headlines around the metaverse and augmented reality. So how do you see the physical world and the digital world blending and converging together? Well, I think we've already seen a long trajectory where software and physical are actually sort of blurring. But if I think about sort of um, physical and virtual or digital sort of blending, is in the first place, how do we interact with our computer systems? Yeah, in, in the past, all interaction was driven by the machinery itself, screen, keyboard, mouse. And that's also how applications were being built. But I think with the rise of uh, tools like Alexa and other voice assistants, we already get a much more natural way of interacting. And then if you start seeing like companies like Soul Machines, who build emotional uh, uh, context through facial recognition uh, in applications. Now think about virtual reality and augmented reality. I think augmented reality is already reality. Yeah, I think it's many of the factory workers or, or the supply chain workers may have already have glasses on where there's contextual information about sort of the work that they're doing, improving efficiency, but mostly importantly, improving safety. Virtual reality, I think, is still at this moment in a phase where um, it's, it's mostly used by either gaming or it's used by salespeople. And how do you see technology changing the game when it comes to sports? I find it extremely exciting. One of the things in, in sports is a great example of how the world is becoming more and more data driven. These days, every athlete already is carrying harnesses that have all sorts of sensors in them. And also we come to a point where, you know, audio and video are no longer data streams, no, no longer streams just to be watched or listened to, they become data streams. And if you look at uh, young companies like, like Vio from Denmark and Huddle in, here in the US, there are companies that are using video from amateur games to help amateur games to reach a much higher level of playing. Younger players today, let's say if, even in the category from eight to 12, for example, they're all visual learners. They all are, know exactly how to evaluate a, a piece of video. If you would give them a written text, they wouldn't be able to learn that easily. And as such, these uh, new applications that are being built for sports really um, engage where the players are in their life, namely in a video-driven world. Amazon is one of the biggest companies in the world, and it has one of the most diverse consumer bases. So how do you ensure all consumers are represented in the innovation process? I think most important there is that as innovators ourselves, we need to have a clear view, who are we innovating for? And for example, at Amazon, we have a particular strategy that's called working from the customer backwards. At Amazon, we have this, this process where we start with actually writing a press release without that we ever written one line of software. Yeah, mostly because in a press release, you write very clearly exactly how, what is the product that you want to build and why do you want to build it. And then from that, you go to sort of writing the first user manual. Even without actually having the, uh, the, the system built at all, you get then a set of documents that clearly describe what you want to achieve for your customers instead of what you want to do with tech technology. Now, from that set of documents, then you work backwards and start building exactly that and not more. How is Amazon staying competitive and relevant and supporting the startup ecosystem? Two things to that. First of all, how, how does Amazon itself continues to be as innovative? Uh, we should go back to the letter to shareholders that Jeff Bezos wrote in 1997 when the company went, went public. He clearly states there, this is a company that will continuously experiment. And so we often use that also as a canary inside to see what is the level of innovation that is happening. If that starts dropping off, you have to investigate. One of the crucial things in all of that process is to have your teams be really small and be them independent. It's, it's famously called two pizza teams. Yeah, you, the teams should not be larger than what you can feed for if two pizzas. Important though, is that innovation needs to be part of your DNA. As a company, you can't wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm an innovator. 
You know, you really need to make sure that you have the right people. You have to hire people that want to take risks. Yeah, if you think about engineering, if you have this group of engineers that were babysitting your SAP system for a very long time, you want them to be conservative. You don't want them to take risks.